Fairy tales and folklore have been around for thousands of years, starting out as oral stories passed down by communities and families. Little Red Riding Hood goes back 2,000 years. Jack and the Beanstalk, about 5,000 years. Rumpelstiltskin and Beauty and the Beast were based on stories that were up to 6,000 years old. Originally meant for adults, fairy tales eventually became children's literature that was intended to teach lessons. They were told as examples of good versus bad, strong versus weak, wisdom versus foolishness. Often the main characters could redeem themselves through acts of kindness. Sometimes stories didn't have a good ending. Many tales took place in the forest. What about Little Red Riding Hood? In the forest. Goldilocks and the Three Bears? In the forest. Hansel and Gretel? In the forest. Whether it was an enchanted forest or a deep dark woods, the forests were where wild animals roamed and mystery lurked. I'm going to read a story to you about being in the woods and then you'll meet some of the forest animals we have here at the Akron Zoo. The Gruffalo by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. A mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. It's terribly kind of you, Fox, but no, I'm going to have lunch with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo, why don't you know? He has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. Where are you meeting him? Here, by the rocks, and his favorite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox? Oh my, Fox said. Goodbye, little mouse, and away he sped. Silly old fox, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. An owl saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Join me for tea in my treetop house. It's frightfully nice of you, owl, but no, I'm going to have tea with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo? Why, don't you know? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. Where are you meeting him? Here by the stream, and his favorite food is owl ice cream. Owl ice cream? To wit, to who? Goodbye, little mouse, and away owl flew. Silly old owl, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. A snake saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come for a feast in my log pile house. It's wonderfully good of you, snake, but no, I'm having a feast with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo? Why, don't you know? His eyes are orange, his tongue is black, he has purple prickles all over his back. Where are you meeting him? Here, by this lake, and his favorite food is scrambled snake. Scrambled snake? It's time I hid. Goodbye, little mouse, and away snake slid. Silly old snake, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? Oh, but who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange, his tongue is black, he has purple prickles all over his back. Oh, help! Oh, no! It's a gruffalo! My favorite food, the gruffalo said. You'll taste good on a slice of bread. Good, said the mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this deep, dark wood. Just walk behind me and soon you'll see. Everyone is afraid of me. Oh, sure, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You lead the way, and I'll follow after. They walked and walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in the grass ahead. It's a snake, said the mouse. Why, snake, hello. Snake took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, dear, he said. Goodbye, little mouse, and slid right into his log pile house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. 
amazing, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. It's Owl, said the mouse. Why, Owl, hello. Owl took one look at the Gruffalo. Boo-hoo, he said. Goodbye, little mouse, and flew right up to his treetop house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I hear some paws on the path ahead. It's Fox, said the mouse. Why, Fox, hello. Fox took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, help, he said. Goodbye, little mouse, and ran right into his underground house. The mouse said, Gruffalo, now you see, everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy is starting to rumble, and my favorite food is Gruffalo Crumble. Gruffalo Crumble, the Gruffalo said, and quick as the wind, he turned and fled. All was quiet in the deep, dark wood. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. Hi, this is Shelly, and Shelly is an eastern box turtle. Now, even though she's called an eastern box turtle, she really has a lot of the same characteristics or traits of a tortoise. For instance, turtles, they live in the water, so they have webs that spread out and swim. Tortoises, they live on land, so they have claws to help them dig, dig, dig deep down into the mud and into the dirt. Another way to tell is the shell. Now, a shell like this is pretty heavy. If this animal went into heavy, you know, deep water, nah, it wouldn't survive because this shell is meant for land. Turtles who swim in water have a thinner, flatter shell, so that's another really good way to tell. Now, turtles are in fairy tales. In fact, if you think of a really famous folk tale about the tortoise and the hare and the race that they were on. So, turtles, tortoises, they're seen in a pretty good light. Um, they're the good animals in a fairy tale story. Now, some really neat stuff. A turtle can pull itself all the way inside and hide inside its shell if it's afraid. And the way that they do that, they actually have a hinge right there on the bottom. And this hinge they get when they're three years old. And that hinge will open and shut. Now, until they're three years old, they actually have to use their color to hide. And Using your color to hide is another word for camouflage. So they live in the woods, and if you look, they have colors like the dirt and like trees and kind of like darker grasses. So they're able to hide deep into the woods using camouflage, which really comes in handy when they can't go completely into their shells all the way. Now, a lot of cartoons will have turtles throwing their shells off and running. This animal really can't do that, okay? Those are just cartoons, and that's all make-believe. Because the spine of this animal on the inside is attached by skin to the shell. If something happens to the shell of this animal and it gets broken, it actually will affect the inside. And turtles and tortoises can feel what's going on with the shell. For instance, they can feel when they're touched on the inside. So that's a pretty good thing. Now, um, also, Shelly is a girl. Now, it's not 100% accurate, but for the most part, girls have dark brownish, maybe orangish eyes. And you can kind of see by looking at them. And boys, eh, they have bright red and kind of orange eyes. So that's one way to tell. But on the bottom of their shell also, a girl has a nice flat shell. A boy has a thumbprint kind of mark, an indentation right on the bottom. So that's another way that you can tell. Now, you can find these easily throughout the woods here in Ohio, but never take one home. They belong in the woods. They're not lost. They know where they're going. Now, one of the major causes of turtles getting injured is being out in the road. And I'm sure you've seen turtles somewhere out in the road during the summertime. There is a really good reason for that. 
Turtles need warmth. Um, they're called ectothermic, so they can't create their own warmth, like humans and birds. So instead, they get their warmth from the sun. And if you think about it, a road in the summertime is pretty darn warm. So they like going out on that road to get warmth. But another reason could be they just want to go to the other side. Um, or maybe there's a girl turtle on the other side and she's looking for a boyfriend. So the males like to get over there because the first one that gets over there gets to be the boyfriend. So that's another reason. Now, should you ever go out into the road to help an animal? No, not unless you have an adult with you. Let the adult decide what to do because you could get hit. You could get bit. This animal would be terrified in the road or you could get sick. They may have some type of disease. So always have an adult come and decide what to do. Okay, thank you. Hello, this is Maze, and Maze um, is a rat snake, and she actually is the kind of snake that would live in dirt the same color of her. Um, she actually um, does that in order to camouflage. So she would be found probably some places like in Georgia, um, you know, where they have that red clay dirt, Alabama. Here in Ohio, you're going to get snakes that are more brown, black, uh, maybe green to, you know, go with the grass. Now, all snakes, though, get a bad rap usually in fairy tales. For some reason, snakes are usually not the ones that are the good animals. They're seen as bad. And that's really wrong because snakes do a lot of good stuff. In fact, snakes, this particular snake, well, a corn snake, red snake, likes to go into um, gardens and eat rats and mice that gather there. And I really like that because, you know, I wouldn't want to eat corn that has like mouse pee all over it. So other things about snakes. Now, all snakes constrict. It's not just bow constrictors. Constricting simply means squeezing and releasing. And one of the reasons they do that is because when they're hungry and they find food, and they're really good at finding food because they stick their tongues out and they can taste smell on their tongue. So when she sticks her tongue out, she's smelling. That's what all reptiles do. They smell with that wonderful tongue. And their tongue is kind of split so they can smell to the right, smell to the left. It lets them smell all around. And when they smell like that, you know, this snake could find um, a mouse easily in a cornfield. And when they do find it, they don't suffocate it. What a snake will do is they'll hold their food with their teeth and then wrap around it, squeeze really hard um, until their heart stops beating. And then they eat their food. But if you look at that mouth and that neck, I mean, they're just not real big. So the way that they fit something like a mouse inside, they just swallow little by little by little, and their mouth can stretch really big and wide. And eventually, after a couple days, it goes all the way through their body, and it does end up, you know, dissolving. Now, something else about snakes, because they are reptiles, they are ectothermic, just like our turtle, and they need to have heat. So a lot of times you can find these out in the woods, laying on rocks, uh, laying on a bed of twigs, because they're laying there waiting to get heated up and warm. Now, they're not out there laying around waiting for you to come around while, they're, while you're hiking. They're not going to hurt you. They're just sitting there getting warm. And chances are, They'll go away as fast as you possibly can, too. So just remember, when you do see snakes, they're not bad animals. They're not the animals that people talk about wrapping around your necks or trying to chase you. Snakes are really good. And when it comes to fairy tales, yeah, occasionally you can find one that has a good ending with a snake in it. So thank you so much for watching our summer reading program and make sure that you're part of your library summer reading program and read about snakes and find out everything great about not just snakes and turtles, all the animals that live here in our forests. Okay, thank you.